To the gatekeepers, the shitsayers, and all who put dreams into boxes, this video is for you. I know what you're all thinking. How do you stay ahead? How can you spot the next big thing? How do you secure your job in the future? We all have lots of questions. And there's so much advice online. Stick to the big tech. Play it safe. Go for the next big thing. Ride the trends. Master this year's hottest five technologies. In my opinion, this is all terrible advice. When I first told my family that I wanted to become a software engineer, my dad said, what is that? You should be a professor like me. It was my dad's dream for either my sister or myself to be a professor like him. But the irony is that he was a rebel himself. In his 30s, he had a wife and a child, and he left his cushy job in Korea to fly to America for a PhD in brewing beer. We call him the OG hipster, rocking a beanie and glasses, armed with just a thousand dollars and a ton of determination. Growing up, I hustled multiple jobs from age 14 to make a living because that's just how our family rolled. My dad wasn't a professor for the riches, but really for his passion in brewing beer. Although I didn't follow his wishes of becoming a professor at the time, I did have my fair share of shoulds moment. After graduating with my CS degree, Everyone said that I should stick to the big tech for security because this was during the economic crashes in 2007. So I ended up joining IBM, one of the biggest tech companies at the time. And that was a terrible decision. I really craved autonomy, ownership, and creativity, and not bureaucracy. Eventually, I quit my job, took a break, and explored around, and I decided to return to Silicon Valley. Tech at the time really fascinated me because it was a world of hope and innovation, unlike the other places that I've been at. So I decided to join a tiny little startup at the time that nobody really knew about in America at least, called WhatsApp. I was the 19th engineer at WhatsApp and many skeptics doubted me. Choose a bigger company. WhatsApp isn't going to last. It's not going anywhere. And everyone had an opinion. It all eventually stopped when Facebook bought WhatsApp for $19 billion in 2015. People ask why such a big acquisition? Well, there were multiple reasons, but one of them was that WhatsApp was the messaging king. People were sending more text messages on WhatsApp than SMS. And eventually it was enough to threaten Facebook to open up its wallets for an acquisition. And that was that. Money really talked and doubters really stopped. More recently, when I was starting Exaltitude to support the tech underdogs, doubters emerged again. People said, be a VC, join the tech success, find the next big thing. Well, if you really think about it, that's what people do in tech when they've made it big, right? But it's really not my thing. I'm not really after more money. Influence is not really my thing. Everyone's free to do what they want to do. There's also legacy and I'm really not into impressing post-life opinions. And I said no thanks to being a VC. And for those of you who are watching this, you might be uncertain about your passions or path, and that's okay. It's just the years of conditioning talking. We've all been there. We've been conditioned not to think for ourselves. And that's why we built the Exaltitude curriculum to help you with the tools to find your own path. And tech's like the wild, wild west right now with AI shaking up the landscape. We can pioneer, take risks, and shape norms. And tech has the potential to really change lives. Tech has always been changing and gatekeepers and should sayers really can't tell you what's going to happen next in tech. And even Sam Altman, the guy who built ChatGPT, can't predict a decade ahead because no one can really tell the future except for you. You can shape your own future, you can break your own limits, and you can create your own reality. So which shoulds are holding you back and are you ready to shatter them?